Lord, just use your word to uh, either reach others or just to help us in our walk, daily walk. We thank you. Thank you for the church being open for Bible study and for Donnie's willingness to teach us. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 All right. <laughs> All right, we're going to be in Acts chapter 14. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole bunch of, of uh, city pronunciations in here that I'm probably going to do <laughs> poorly on. So we will uh, we'll get close in the ballpark, as they say. You're there in Acts chapter 14, verse 1 says, And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. Long time therefore abode they, speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them, they were aware of it and fled unto Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lyconia, Lycaonia, and unto the region that lieth round about, and there they preached the gospel. And there said a certain man of Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked, the same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him, perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lycaonia, The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas Jupiter, and Paul Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker. And the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates, and, when, and would have done sacrifices with the people. Which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out and saying, Sirs, why do ye do these things? We also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, and that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And when these, and with these sayings, scarce restrained they the people, that they had not done sacrifice unto them. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, <coughs> who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city. The next day he departed with Barnabas and Derbe. And when they had preached the gospel to that city, and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra, and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. When they had ordained them elders in every church and prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. And after they had passed through Pisidia, they had came to Pamphylia. And when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down into Italia and thence sailed to Antioch, from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. When they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And there they abode long time with the disciples. <clears throat> so in these 28 verses, it sounds a lot like the world today, doesn't it? Mm. You know, you've got a divided 
Now, I mean, we've got a divided nation, regardless of how you want to look at it. Yep. We've got a divided <laughs> world, regardless of how you want to look at it. You don't have to turn on a news broadcast to know that. You know, you look around at people anymore, nobody cares about anybody. They just don't. You know, it's all about me, what I can do. And the same was going on at this time. You know, we start out this, this uh, passage, and it says, When they came to pass in Iconium, that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and spoke, that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. That's a wonderful way to start out the chapter. Mm -hmm. They believed. Look what comes next. But, remember we talked about this last week. Mm -hmm. But, is not a good use of that word in this situation. But the unbelieving Jews... Stirred up the Gentiles, made their minds evil, affected against the brethren. You know, I've said, I've said this many times, I know Dad has too, that you will run into more gossip in the church house than you will out in the world. Mm. You ever notice that? You know what I mean? Did people pit out to get against one another? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't like that preacher. And the only reason they're saying it is because they want you to listen to them. <clears throat> See, if, if you didn't care what other people thought, you just didn't like the preacher, you just keep it to yourself. But they don't do that. Mm -hmm. I don't like the preacher. Why'd they sing that song? I don't like that song. Mm -hmm. We have sung that song for the past three weeks. Mm -hmm. Why don't they pick a different song? Mm -hmm. You know, it's little things to cause problems. Mm -hmm. And that's what they were doing here. Well, who do they think those guys are? I don't like them. You like them? And that's how it started. And it says that long time therefore both they speaking boldly in the Lord. Now, you want to get a lot of resistance? Start talking about the Lord. Start speaking boldly about the Lord. Start standing up for what's right. And I can promise you, your circle of friends is going to get real small after a while. Because mm -hmm. people don't like the truth. See, people that want to grow in the Lord, people that want to become a stronger Christian, they like to hear the truth. Mm -hmm. I come to church to hear the truth. I, I've said it before. I don't come to church to find out what I'm doing right. Mm -hmm. I come to church to find out what I need to change. In my life. Yeah. Yeah. What I got to work on. Because what I'm getting right, that's good. Keep doing that. Mm -hmm. But where do I need to change? What do I need to do better? What do I need to fix? Because as Christians, we should always have that desire to be better for the Lord. <laughs> you know what I mean? We should always have that desire. Right. And so when you start speaking the truth, you're going to find out who your real friends are mm -hmm. and who the people are that are out to cause you problems. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're going to find out real quick. And sometimes that comes from people you didn't expect it to come from. Yeah. <laughs> Is usually where that comes from. Mm -hmm. And I know, I know, it's hard to deal with conflict when it comes from people that you love. People that you care about. People in your family. And I know my dad has said this, I've said it. If tomorrow, <coughs> mom and dad got up and said, you know what, we're not following the Lord anymore. I love my parents. But I'll tell them. I'm going to keep following God. Amen. Because that's what you got to decide in your heart. Yeah. What's more important. <laughs> now I know tomorrow they're not going to wake up and say that. But for the sake of conversation. You've got to decide in your heart. I'm going to stick with God even if everybody turns against me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> because he said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. And it says, and granted, signs and wonders would be done by their hands. But, there's that word again. But the multitude of the city was divided, in part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. And when there was an assault made, both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers, to use them despitefully, and to stone them, they were aware of it, and fled unto Lystra, and Derbe, cities of Lycaon. There's that word, Lycaonia under the region that lie round about, and there they preach the gospel. But notice something. That last verse, verse 7, in that section, and there they preach the gospel. They didn't stop preaching the gospel. 
Guys, no matter what you and I encounter, do not stop serving God. Amen. Don't. Because the, the, the devil wants you and I to go, well, I just can't do it anymore. Everybody's against me. I feel defeated. Nobody's listening. Nobody's paying. I just don't know why I'm doing it. Because God asked us to do it. And we need to stay faithful and do it. Amen. They didn't give up. And I can promise you, opposition back then was a lot rougher than it is today. I mean, by a raise of hands, how many of us had to sneak out of the house just to come to church tonight? None of us. Back in these days, you had to sometimes not let people know you were gathered together mm -hmm. for the threat of being put in jail, killed. Yeah. But they kept going. They kept preaching the gospel. And God kept blessing. That's the biggest thing I want us to realize tonight as we read through this. There is still work to be done regardless of the opposition. Yep. Keep yeah. going. Then they went to Lystra and there was a man that couldn't walk. He was that way from his mother's womb. It says the same heard Paul speak who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed said with a loud voice stand upright on thy feet and he leaped and walked. See, there is a reason God puts you somewhere in your life. Mm -hmm. We've said this many a time. Your calling from God is not just about you. There are people you're going to meet. There are people that God has placed in your path. There are things that only you can do that God has made available to you. Mm -hmm. When God called me to preach, if I just said, no, Lord, I'm just going to go do this over here. Some would say, well, you know, it's still a good Christian thing. And yeah, it was. But how many people would have not heard the gospel had I decided to go another route? Mm -hmm. What if there's people in your path that were meant only for you? You say, yeah, but somebody else will pick up the slack. There'll be somebody else there. No. Maybe that somebody else was you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now that person's not going to hear the gospel mm -hmm. because you thought you were still doing a good godly Christian thing by doing this instead of doing that. And that those people's only opportunity of knowing Jesus Christ never came. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to stand before God with that. Where were you? Well, Lord, I was over here. I was doing things in your name. Yeah, but that's not what I asked you to do. What if Paul would have said, you know, Lord, it's too tough down there. I'm going to go over here. Then this man would have never been healed. The gospel would have never came to the Gentiles. Us. Would have never came to us. Yeah, but there was plenty of other disciples. Yeah, but Paul was the missionary to the Gentiles. Without him, would we still be able to be where we're at today? Maybe not. Yeah, but Jesus died on the cross and we'd have never known it. See, when God met Paul on the road to Damascus, at that moment, Paul's responsibility was to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. That's us. Jesus Christ opened up something that was never owed to us and he offered it to us anyway. Originally, it was for the Jews, God's chosen people. I'm thankful today that Jesus Christ gave me the opportunity to come to the cross. Amen. To know a Savior that would die for me. I'm thankful that Paul listened to the calling. You know, there's Dad and I have talked about this before. There's preachers who will retire from the ministry. I've never understood that. I retire from my job. I don't view preaching the gospel as a job. I view preaching the gospel as a, as a, a blessing. You know? But they'll retire. I, I don't 
That's almost like telling God, well, you know, I've had uh, X amount of years. I think I'm all done. Right, right. <laughs> yep. It, yeah. It, it, it's like a negotiation. Well, Lord, I, I gave you 25 years and I'm out. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, the way I see it, you're done when God says you're done. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know what I mean? There's still, there's still people lost. I mean, I'd love to wake up tomorrow when everybody was saved. Mm -hmm. But it's not like that. Mm -hmm. That means we still got a responsibility. I've seen preachers preach from a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. If anybody could retire, it'd probably be them. But they're still going. You know, that reminds me of uh, Charles Stanley. Mm -hmm. I was reading some of his comments, his, their, his family. He didn't retire from ministry, he said. I'm retiring because of my health. He, you know, he had a yeah. lot of health issues toward the end. But there's a lot of comments of people that still called on him. Mm -hmm. And he would minister to him. And his grandson said, even on the last days and last hours of him going home, he was still doing it. Yeah. 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 Because that's the thing. I mean, when the Lord calls you to it. Now, I understand retiring from being a senior pastor of a church. Uh, I get that. But, you know, you're retiring from a position at that point. But you, you, like in this situation, he wasn't retiring from the ministry. I've also known preachers that could preach the walls down mm -hmm. that turned their back on God, walked away from him because of situations in life. I don't, and, and, and don't come back to church. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. I know that things in life happen. I know that not everything goes as planned, and sometimes trials and tribulations that you never expected show up in your life. But why in the world in those moments would you say, I'm all done with what God called me to do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, to, to turn your back on the one that's always been there yeah. for you. You know, if anybody could have said, you know, Lord, I, I just, I can't do it anymore. It's the disciples. But they didn't. Mm -hmm. And here in just a minute, we're going to find out Paul was stoned and then dragged out of the city because they thought he was dead. Mm -hmm. And while the disciples stood around him, he got back up. Yeah. They went back in the city. How many of us, if somebody threw rocks at us in town... And drug us outside of town, dropped us off to die, would jump back up and go, All right, let's go back in. Probably not many of us. I'm not real sure. I'd be real happy about getting up and going, All right, guys, let's, uh, let's walk it off. All right, let's go. <laughs> now, I'm not real sure that I could stand here in truthfulness and say, Lord, I'd go back in there. I'd probably get up and go, Lord. Really? <laughs> Did you not just notice what happened? <laughs> Where are you at, buddy? But they had the but they had the 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 the, the desire to say, you know what, we're not done yet. Yeah. I'm not dead. They thought I was dead, but I'm not dead. We're going back. Round two. Mm. I'm pretty sure I said, Paul, <laughs> I'll catch you tomorrow. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's the kind of commitment we need to have. When somebody says, oh, don't, don't talk to me about the Lord, go, okay. But I'm going to pray for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Don't give up on them. Mm -hmm. Just like Sister Isabel was saying this morning, you know, we need to love people like Jesus loved them. Yeah. We need to love people like Jesus loved us. Yeah. I wasn't all that much to love when the Lord found me. But he loved me. He died for me. We need to start seeing people as a soul in need of Jesus Christ instead of a soul that's that in all the sin that they've committed. Who cares what they've committed? That's God right. can change that. That's right. We need to start seeing people in need of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. We do. Mm -hmm. You know, we tend to think the missionary field is somewhere overseas, thousands of miles away. No, the missionary field's right across your street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's in your own backyard. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? We've got something worth sharing. Or at least I think we do. Now, yes, in today's world, nobody wants to hear about that. 
They want to be able to do their own thing whenever they want to do it, just like Dad preached this morning. We, when we were lost, we lived our life the way we wanted to live it, how we wanted to live it, went where we wanted to, when we wanted to, and stayed for as long as we wanted to. Donnie, you know, my dad um, loved my, my brother was a very bad alcoholic, very bad. And my dad stayed faithful to him, uh, loving him. And uh, when my dad died, he called me to his side and he told me, he says, I may never see it, but my dad had faith in God that God was going to heal him from that, mm -hmm. from, from, from that alcohol. He said, the last breath that my dad took within those hours, he told he called me over and he said, I will never see it, but your eyes will see it for me because I believe your your God is going to heal your brother. And I got a big thing in my throat just saying, oh, I thought to myself, not, not letting my dad realize the expression that I had in my heart, dad, how can you still believe it? Saul is still not ever going to give up alcohol. Well, it came to pass that it happened. Mm -hmm. My dad, beyond his grave, never sees it. But I got to see it, like he told me. But your eyes will see it for me, he said. Yeah. Your brother is going to stop drinking. But he, my dad believed it till he died, yeah. that God mm -hmm. was going to heal him. But, you know, there was people that would tell my dad, why, why ask for prayer? Why keep believing in your son? He's never going to change. Because my dad told him, he's my son, not yours. Mm -hmm. He said, I love my son no matter what. He's my son, not yours. Yeah. But my dad loved my brother and he believed in him that someday he was going to change. And it happened. That's it. Amen. See, that's the kind of faith we got to have, guys. Mm -hmm. The kind of faith, when the Bible says it, it says, don't look at what you currently see. Mm -hmm. Trust the Lord with all your heart. And what's it say after that? Lean not into thine own understanding. Mm -hmm. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. It means when you trust that, you know what? I have given this situation to God. I have given over this person to either be delivered, to be saved, to be healed, whatever it may be. I've given that to God. I've entrusted that to the king of glory. So I am in full faith in who God is that he's going to answer and as Brother Ralph said, in his time. Mm -hmm. See, that's the biggest thing we need to accept. And I think that's the biggest thing we have a problem with in his time. We wanted it yesterday. And if it isn't yesterday, then I guess it's just not coming. That's how we generally think about it. But we need to have the kind of faith that Sister Angie's dad had in his son. Is that, you know what, Lord? I know you're going to save him. I know you're going to deliver him. I know you're going to heal him. Whatever the situation is, I've given it to you, and that's where I'm going to leave it. Amen. Yes. But Donnie, he died. Yeah. He died, but in his death, he never got to see it, but he believed it. Exactly. When we, and we that's what it, we need. We have. We, that's where your faith. Yeah. You live by faith, not by sight. That's it. You know, if you're going to go around and you have faith, but you see all this broken people and whatever everybody else is doing. And yeah. not believe it, then you don't have no faith. That's it. But I look, uh, it's like with my grandson. I know who my grandson is. And I know what God, who, that God created him. Mm -hmm. And I know that this kind of life is not what God chose for him. That's it. You know, if we've been there, we make mistakes all the yeah. time. Nobody's perfect. No. But I believe in my heart. And I go stand on, with my faith in the Lord that mm -hmm. he's going to be healed. That's it. It's his time. Well, it's like this man. Crippled from his mother's womb. He had never walked. Mm -hmm. The Bible says. Who it, Right up here in verse uh, uh, 8. There was a certain man in history that impotent his feet, being a crippled from his mother's womb, who never had walked. He didn't know what it was to walk. He'd never done that. He'd seen other people do it. Mm -hmm. But he'd never done it. But you know what? He had He's seen Paul, and he heard Paul speak. Yeah. And he knew, and the Bible says... Uh, and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. That means the crippled man in his heart said, I, can I believe heal. God can heal me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something, guys. The faith of a grain of a, the size of a grain of mustard seed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can we use that term a lot? Oh, faith the size of a grain of mustard seed can move mountains. Yes. 
The Lord wasn't talking about physical mountains. No. No. Now with the Lord, anything's possible. But that's not what he was talking about. Mm. He wasn't talking about walking up to Mount Everest and saying, casting it into the water. <laughs> that's not what he was talking about. What he was talking about was the mountains in your life. Yeah, right. yep. The things you face, the things you deal with, the things you encounter. Yes. You can say to it to be removed and cast into the sea, and it will be. But you have to have the kind of faith that says, I trust God no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. And this man had that too. He yeah. said, you know what? I believe I can be healed. Oh, yes. And, said with a, and Paul said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. See, Jesus said, now call me crazy, but I'm just crazy enough to believe it. That when Jesus said, greater things can you do than what you've seen me do. And we've talked about this a lot in Bible study. We all know the things that Jesus did. Healed the blind man. Healed the crippled man. Uh, raised Lazarus from the dead. You know what I mean? Uh, healed the, 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 the daughter of the centurion. All of these things Jesus did and more. But he said, greater things can you do. Yep. Why? Yep. Because of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And if we believed two tenths of a percent of that, yes. just imagine what we could do. But you know what the problem is humanly? You can take the best Christian out there and you run the risk of them taking something and making it about them. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Because with great responsibility comes great humility. Mm -hmm. And the one thing the disciples had amongst many other things was they never made it about them. There are far too many churches today. It's all about them. Mm. This is how many people we've got saved. This is mm. how many people we got baptized. Hold up. You didn't do anything. Right. Okay? You got to be, you should be grateful you got to be a part of it. Yeah. 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 But it's not because of you. It's not because of me. Yeah. It's because of Jesus. Yeah. And we need to realize that that when I when you see somebody come to the to the altar to give their heart to the Lord, be thankful you got to be a part of that. Yes. Oh, but yes. guess what? That's between God and that person. Yes. Yes. The Holy Spirit brought them mm -hmm. that path to God. Be thankful that you got to witness it. Be thankful that you got to pray with it. Be thankful that you got to see it. I'll tell you what. There's no greater day in human life than to see somebody come to know Jesus. Amen. There's no greater day than that. Because that's the day you see them truly beginning to live their life. That's the day they met Jesus Christ. Because I remember the day I met him. Yes, brother. I love what you're saying and you're teaching this morning so far. I agree 100% because that's from God you're saying. But I believe all my heart this is God telling me, be strong mm -hmm. and don't give up. Because at the end, you will be rewarded. That's it. <laughs> and the rewards that God's got for you, nobody knows by himself. But when we meet face to face, whoo! I just <laughs> felt the spirit from heaven and, and I feel good today. Amen. Uh, we're saying that because God is number one, and God <laughs> is only one God, and He don't need no help. Yeah. He don't need a secondary or nobody else but Him, and He's the one we trust and believe. And Jesus Christ will come one of these days. <laughs> it might be tonight. We don't know. That's right. Like the world is going today. You know, you hear rumors of war. I told the wife, look. There's another rumor, and she said, "Yes, there's rumors of war in in God's word too. Mm -hmm. That we're going to be hurt, and we're not out of war yet. No. Who are you going to trust, the the, the the president or the government? Yeah. You know. But prayer is the answer. The the I believe prayer is the answer for everything. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Amen. You know, and I love what Brother Wright said about prayer too. There at the end, is that you know the the thought crossed my mind when he said that. 
You know, I love our prayer boards over here. Oh, yes. But you know what I'd love more than that? Is being able to erase everybody's name off there because God already answered that prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's nothing greater than taking, being able to go to the Lord. It doesn't matter if it's 3 o'clock in the morning or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. And bring your need to God. But what's even greater than that is seeing God address a need and fix a need and change a life. You know what I mean? Yep. Prayer is our strongest weapon. Amen. But it seems to be our last resort sometimes, doesn't it? Well, I tried everything, God, nothing happened, so I figured I'd bring it to you. Should have done that first. Should have, should have done that first. But when he stood upright to his feet, he leaped and walked. And when the people, now listen to this, and when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. See, now this could have been the moment where Paul would have been like, there you go. Yeah. It's all about me. Yeah, right. They called Barnabas and Paul because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands under the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people for Paul and Barnabas. Again, Paul could have been like, well, there it is, guys. Look at us. Mm -hmm. But when they heard, Paul and Barnabas, when they heard of this, rent their clothes and ran among the people crying out and saying, Sirs, why do you do these things? We are also like, uh, we, are, we are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God. What they were saying is, whoa, what are you doing? It's not about us. Mm -hmm. after everything you've heard us teach you and preach to you this is the direction you went you know how many so called preachers step into a pulpit because of the paycheck they make every week mm -hmm. and not because they truly care about serving mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. let me tell you something any you want to test any preacher's quote unquote preacher Commitment to the calling of Christ. Take away their big house, their multiple cars, and their checking account. And you tell me how many of them are still standing in line to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. That's true. Because if you're not willing to do it for free, then you're not willing to do it. Mm. Nowhere in the scripture does it say that you preach the gospel to become rich. Someone says. Mm -hmm. When we are called of Christ, we are called to take up our cross, as my dad said this morning, and follow him. Jesus said, You will be hated of me. You will not be accepted. You'll be talked about, ridiculed, disrespected, and sometimes even killed. Guys, we've got to be careful who we set on a pedestal. I've said this so many times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be on a pedestal. Please yeah. don't put me on one. Put Jesus Christ on a pedestal. Amen. I've had people say to me, I didn't bring my Bible because I know you're going to tell me the truth. I appreciate that more than I can ever say. Mm -hmm. But bring your Bible. Mm -hmm. Because I will always do my very best through the Holy Spirit to tell you what thus saith the word of God. Mm -hmm. But I'm still a man. Which means I can misinterpret something. I can missay something. That could ultimately lead you in a direction you shouldn't go. I want you to read God's word. And listen to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Brother Mike, I appreciate what you said to me. More than I could ever say. But it is, I want people to. Listen to the Holy Spirit. And I love what you said when you said you listened to the Holy Spirit. Yes. That's where it's at, guys. Mm. Yeah. We're all going to a place called heaven. I don't know the direction just as my dad said this morning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. In order for us to know what God says in his word, we've got to do it through the lens of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we're all going the same direction. And I will always, and you know that, I will always do my best mm -hmm. to tell you the truth. Yes. 
And any time that I cannot tell the truth, you will see me shut my mouth and sit down. Mm -hmm. Because if I can't tell you the truth, I ain't going to tell you anything. Yeah. That's just the way it is. Yeah, but I'm, I'm thankful. I'm, yes, brother. No, you know that a lot of ministers, they go and preach the gospel. And uh, they think they're doing the right thing. But money comes first in their life, and then goes to the Lord. Yeah. And, and that's bad. And that's, that's, you know, the Bible says, you know, woe unto you, woe unto them that make merchandise of God's word. How many people are out there selling you something dealing with the Bible? Let me tell you something. I've had people before say, hey, could uh, uh, how much would it cost for you to send me a Bible? Uh, nothing. I'll send you a Bible. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Ain't going to cost you anything. <clears throat> if I've got to drive it to you, I'll get it to you. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not going to go, well, you know, uh, uh, you know t uh, $20. Why? That, the Bible's not mine. That's right. That's God's word. Yeah, amen. And that's available to everybody. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, we got a whole stack of them back here where we hang coats up on top. Anybody who needs a Bible, I think there's like 30 of them back there. You know what I mean? We've got it available. But the thing is, is that I love what Paul and Barnabas were doing, was saying, well, guys, you got to knock this off. It ain't about us. We are in this, we are like passions, just like you are. Yeah. You know, yes. Uh, we went to a church one time to a revival and they had the minister come in and then towards the end of it he would had Bibles for sale that just took my mind. A hundred dollars. And they were going up there left and right all over buying those Bibles because he was sold. Mm. And like you said, they should have given them away. They should. You know what I mean? There's it, it, you know, it's if if you write a book on your own and sell it. That's fine. Uh -huh. You didn't write the Bible. Mm -hmm. God did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as my dad said this morning, it's signed, sealed, and delivered. And it's postage paid. Mm -hmm. Means I don't have a right to walk up to somebody and say, <coughs> $100. I don't have a right to walk up to somebody and say a dollar for God's word. God's word should be, I'd like a Bible. Here you go. Because mm -hmm. let me tell you something. That Bible is going to change your life. But he said, why, why have you, you haven't turned from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven, earth, the sea, and all the things therein, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness in that he did good, gave us rain from heaven, a fruitful season, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And it says that when they said all these things, they scarcely restrained, they the people, had not done sac and had not done sacrifice unto them. <clears throat> Starting in verse 19, and they came hither certain Jews from Antioch, Iconium, who persuaded the people. And having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city. This is what we were talking about earlier, supposing he had been dead. How, how be it, as the disciples stood around about him, he rose up, came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. When they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter in the kingdom of God. And I want you to think about that. We're going to stop here at verse 22. I want you to think about what was just said in that. We talked about it earlier. Paul got stoned, drug out of the city, jumped up, decided he'd go back in there and went back in there and, and met up with Barnabas and and uh, they departed the next day to Derbe. When they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra. So think about that. Lystra's the city he got stoned in and thrown out of. Okay? So he went back in there and got Barnabas and they went over to uh, uh, Derbe. They preached over there. Gave Lystra a day or two to, you know, relax. You know, let them get whatever they got their problem over there. Let them get that under control. We got a job to do. So he went with Barnabas over to Derbe, preached the gospel. Many were uh, affected and, 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 and changed over there. 
You know where they go? All right? Uh -huh. Back to Lystra. Mm -hmm. Somebody could have said, yeah, Paul, but that's where you got stoned. Yeah, it was days ago. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but he went back. And uh, and when they had preached the gospel of that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. How much would it have an effect on your life if somebody who was stoned, almost killed for the gospel, came back and exhorted you, built you up to continue in the faith? I don't know about you, but that caused me to go, wow. Yeah. If they can do it, I can do it. Because if they can get stoned, drug out of the cities if they were dead, and get back and go back there again, then that's the kind of love for the Lord that I need. Maybe Paul had a lot of faith that he had to do it, and he just did it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Paul was one of those that he took God at his absolute word. Mm -hmm. And when God said, nothing, no weapon formed against you will prosper, he took that literal. All right? A rock's a weapon. I ain't worried about it. And I've already asked you this question. How many of us would jump up and go, yeah, I ain't worried about that brick. <laughs> you better have some good faith in the Lord because if you don't, that brick's going to hurt. Yeah, uh, Danny, even when somebody just says something to you, yeah. I mean, it, it hurts your feelings. Oh, I'm not going to go back. Right. That person don't like me. <laughs> well, he got, he got beat up. He did. He got hit with rocks. And not little rocks, like driveway rocks. I'm talking about big boulder type rocks. Mm -hmm. You know, bowling ball size rocks. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just like Sister Angie said, somebody will come to church sometime and they'll go, that preacher, he's just mean to me today. I ain't going back there no more. It's the word. There was, there was times people <laughs> told, said to my dad, well, you're just judging me. No, as my dad said, God's word was judging you. Mm -hmm. My dad don't know your life. I don't know your life. God does. There are times I have sat in a church service and been beat to death by the Lord yeah. and went home and went, it was a good day to be at church. Yeah. You know why? Because there's some things I had to fix. Yeah. I've had moments God will bring to my attention that goes, you got to fix that. Yeah. I am tired of Christian people making excuses. Well, you know, I, I don't I, I don't know if that's all that wrong. Let me tell you something. If God's word says it's wrong, it's wrong. Amen. I don't care how you try to justify it. Mm -hmm. It's wrong. And we as Christians should know better. We as Christians should be willing to say, you know what, Lord, you're right. I'm wrong, and I'm going to fix it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? These disciples weren't perfect men. Paul wasn't perfect. Paul was the one that said, the things I should do, those are the things that I don't do. And the things that I shouldn't do, those are the things that I do. What was he talking about? Being human. That's what he was talking about. When somebody pulls out in front of you in traffic and I get mad, that's what I shouldn't do. <laughs> when I sat at Burger King yesterday, it wasn't Taco Bell, surprisingly. But I sat at Burger King and I thought, really? Did they have to go find the cow? Club it over the head and drag it back to the restaurant. I didn't move in 30 minutes. And my thought was, I was just sitting back, you know me, I wasn't sitting back there in a good mood. I was sitting back there going, I just want my Whopper and fry. That's all I want. That's it. I was, can we speed it up a little bit? And you get irritated. Then the guy behind me was a truck who sat taller than I did. It wasn't his fault. And his artificial sun was shining into every mirror in my car. Wow. And then a guy come out of it's it's almost like when Jonah complained that he had to go to Nineveh, and when he went to Nineveh and souls were saved, he sat down under a uh, under a leaf and complained to the Lord that anybody else could have done that. And the Lord sent a worm that eat up the the, the leaf that was given Jonah shade. <laughs> well, when I sat there complaining that it was taking too long for my hamburger. And the guy's lights behind me were way too bright. Guess what happened? <laughs> Somebody came out of Red Lobster, got in their car, and shined their bright lights through my windshield. <laughs> and I thought, 
Right. <laughs> but at that point, I realized, guess what? When you complain, things can get a whole lot worse than they started out with. <laughs> Guys, I say all that to say this. When Paul said that you do the things you shouldn't and the things that you should, you don't. You've all been there. We've all got upset when somebody said something to us or treated us wrong. Yeah. Or in my case, you had to wait somewhere a little longer than you wanted to. Yeah. But when you put it all in perspective, those are immature things to get upset about. Mm -hmm. Shame on me for being like that. God's been way too good to me to sit there and complain about a drive through line. God's been good to me in saving my soul for me to complain about somebody's headlights. Or to complain because, you know, you had to do this or you had to do that or... You know, whatever it may be, fill in the blank. At the end of the day, life's short enough as it is. And we've got a responsibility to, to God <laughs> and people to love. And a blessing of life that some never even got to be a part of. Mm -hmm. Yes. I was at the um, park. We were walking. I was walking our dog, Milo, and Chief was sitting in the car. And... I made it around and on my way back out the sun was shining real bright and I saw a girl waving at me and I thought, uh -huh. I can't see it, who are you, you know? Uh -huh. Well, it was a lady that I had met at the park maybe twice through another girl that was there. I didn't know that lady before, but she remembered me and so um, I stopped and talked to her and she said, yeah, I'm just walking some stress off and she said, I, I said, really? And I, I said, what's going on? You know, I thought, I just felt like well, God wanted me to stop and listen to her, you know, so right. she proceeded to tell me just, it was just um, her, I think her sister had died like um, the month before, and okay. just things were going on in her life, and it was like God said, okay, you're the one that God wanted to meet her at this point, at this time, so what are you going to do? Are you going to walk away and let her just keep going and walking mm -hmm. the stress off? So. God gave, you know, I had, I mean, he gives us courage when we need it. But that mm -hmm. moment, I, I did take the courage to put my arms around her and hug her. And I prayed for her right there at that moment. But I thought, you know, the little things like that, that we don't, I wasn't expecting to run into anybody. I was just going to walk the dog. And he, in fact, he was walking me today. I was like wore out because he was uh, pulling me, you know. Uh, so <clears throat> I guess I'm just saying that to, um not make myself look any good because I didn't really want to do it. I, it's like, I don't really know you that well. Right. But I could see it in her face. And yeah. I said, you know, I lost my sister two years ago and she was younger than me. And I can kind of relate to, you mm -hmm. know, the what you go through. You know, yep. you, you don't even really accept it right away. You know, mm -hmm. it's just, it's surreal, you know. Yeah. So uh, I'm just saying that so we all realize, hey, there might be come a time in our day that we're God's going to cross our path with somebody that he wants us to be the one, even though yeah. we don't think we have it in us, you know? Right. And I thought, her name's Beth, so if you remember her. Absolutely. And that's the thing, guys. I mean, sometimes, we've said this many times, sometimes people just want to be heard. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so much, it, it's, it's better to get things out than to keep them in. You know, because they grow up. They fester, they become a problem. You gotta let it out. And it's good to have somebody that just has an ear and wants to listen. It's also nice when somebody can say, hey, I know what you're going through. Mm -hmm. And you know that they know that. Mm -hmm. You know, we've all said that at times. Well, I know how you feel even if we don't. But when you've been, like you were saying, in a situation exactly the same, in losing a family member, a sister or brother, whatever it may be, then you can, when you're talking to that person, you know how that person's feeling. And you know how you felt mm -hmm. when you went through that. And just having somebody that'll just listen to you, or in this case, pray for you. Guys, that's the biggest thing. When somebody says, if they ever do come to you and say, hey, would you pray for me? You know, when you pray, say, I'll pray for you right now. Yeah. It doesn't matter where you're at. Yeah. Don't say, yeah, I'll pray for you. Because there's a good chance when you get home, yeah. you'll forget. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. Danny, then too, you know, because God loves you, um, if you're Christian or non-Christian, he still loves you. Uh, he could have used Sharon because he loved her, knowing what Sharon had experienced through her sister, to be able to talk to her and pray over her. 
God <coughs> used that opportunity not only for that lady but for Sharon mm -hmm. to do that. That's right. And she was obedient to the mm -hmm. Lord. I was glad I was because that God put mm -hmm. her in that path and that lady's path for God to be able to reach her through that prayer. Absolutely. And we've said God will put you. We need to pray that say, Lord, put people in my path that I can talk to. Yep. That I can witness to. Oh no. No, I couldn't do that. I wouldn't know what to say to him. Mm -hmm. You've been a Christian 20 years. How can you not know what to say to him? Mm -hmm. Tell him what God's done for you. That's right. Mm -hmm. Like my dad said this morning, please tell me that there is something that you can give in saying, this is what God did. I'm thankful for this. Mm -hmm. There's got to be. In a Christian life of 20 years, <coughs> in a Christian life of 20 minutes, let me tell you what you could say. God saved me. Yeah. You know what I mean? But in a Christian life of 20 years, believe me, if there's nothing there for you to say, I'm thankful to the Lord for, like my dad said this morning, you missed it. Mm -hmm. You didn't get it right. It's like there's some Christians that have been, if they've been a Christian for a long time, and you tell them, well, I've been a Christian for five years, or, oh, I've been a Christian for, okay, so what have you done in your Christian life? Yeah. yeah. You know? And... and what bugs me is, and I remember my mom always saying that, be careful when you encounter someone that is talking about the person that they just talked to and walked away, you yeah. start talking about them. Yeah. Because as soon as you walk away from them, they're going to do the same thing. That's it. So she always told us, be careful who you talk about and what you talk about them. Because yeah. you should never talk about somebody. That's you know? it. Yep. Whether it, they've done something good or they're doing something bad. Yeah. He says, what we need to do is just pray. Pray for them. Yep. Yeah. Because gossip can easily be started. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, when it says here, exhorting them to continue in the faith, and we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of, of God. Mm -hmm. Guys, if we think we're going to just wander <laughs> off into heaven, think again. Mm. When you love the Lord, you follow the Lord going all the way back to the beginning of our Bible study this evening, you are not going to be light. You're not going to be popular. You're going to go through tribulation, problems, trials. Why? Because the devil's going to make sure of that. The devil doesn't go, oh, well, they're saved. Might as well just leave them alone. Nothing I can do. He doesn't work that way. He's not like a used car salesman. They will be all about you till they get you the car and then they don't know you anymore. Mm -hmm. One day I pulled in to get an oil change. And uh, here they came. I seen them. I was looking at a pretty expensive car because I had nothing else to do. Mine was getting oil changed. <laughs> and so I figured I'd look at this one. I wanted to see what 100000 would get you in a car. <laughs> and so I'll stand there looking at it. And here they came, man. They must have, I must have really had the look of money that day. Because <laughs> they come out, they come right up. How you doing, sir? I was like, I'm good. How are you? Oh, it's, I'm great. That right there is a good vehicle. I thought, yeah. I'm just here for an oil change. They went, well, have a good day. Walked away. <laughs> that worked. <laughs> but no, I mean, the devil don't work like that. When he shows up and you go, I'm a Christian, he don't go, oh. Man. <laughs> All right. Walks away. That's not how that works. Yeah. If you're a Christian, I can promise you. He's going to be every every corner you take. Oh, yeah. Questioning every move you make. Uh -huh. We well, yeah. didn't do that right. Yeah. Who do you think you are? <laughs> He's done it before coming off after giving a message. You really think anybody listened to that? That wasn't as good as last week. <laughs> I've heard that one before. That wasn't as good as it was last week. Well, that's funny, because last week you told me it wasn't as good as the week before. So which one are we looking at here? But he'll question everything to try to get you to doubt who you are in Jesus Christ. Yeah. He did the same thing to Jesus in his weakest moments. Remember? When he was hungry and tired, that's when the devil showed up. Well, guess what, guys? When you're down, hurt, broken, and defeated... That's when the devil shows up. Yeah. Why? Because he knows you won't take what he's selling when you're 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when you're down, you might listen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I heard a preacher say, he said, you know, and I said this a couple Sundays ago, last Sunday, I believe. If we seen the devil for who he was, we'd think, really? Yeah. 
That yeah. is what I was afraid of. Yeah. The devil's nobody. Because Jesus clearly said, I have overcome the world. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I hold the keys to death, hell, and the grave. What's the devil got? Nothing. <clears throat> so we need to stop giving him so much power. And start living in the power of God. Yeah. We're stronger than he is. Yeah. Why do you think the devil comes along and tries to defeat you? Not because he's afraid of you. He's not afraid of you. He's not afraid of me. He's afraid of the one that lives inside of us. Yeah. The Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why when the devil comes knocking, my dad said this, I have. When he comes knocking on your door, just send the Holy Spirit to answer it. <laughs> He'll take care of it. Mm -hmm. Did you have something, brother? Oh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to pass you up. Yes, brother. Uh, there's two places that they're very strict. My grandson was in the Navy for so many years. And I said, Grandpa, in the, in the military, you don't know, you don't do what you want to do. <laughs> in the port, General Motors, you don't go in there and say, well, I don't feel like going to work today. They will respond replace you for somebody else. <coughs> but I got relation that just sleep over Sunday morning. They feel like going to church. Fine. If not, I got to work Monday morning. But see, that's why the churches are empty. Mm -hmm. And I just found out a couple of days ago they closed two more churches in Clayton. In Clayton. 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 Yeah, Clayton. <laughs> in between Adrian and Hudson. Yeah. Two of them. For the simple reason, my, my, my couple friends, they go there. I said, Tom, are you sure you they didn't, they closed the church? He said, it was just us, our, our, our family, and the preacher. Us three, us four, and no more. And that's why God is looking today of the world, why people don't want to come to church. Yep. You know, they don't want to uh, except the salvation that Jesus Christ himself went to the cross and, and I can still believe when he was on the cross he had his mind on the world mm -hmm. that he would not go condemn it but they would be saved through him Yep. and that's what you're teaching today be strong yeah. and don't give up that's it because he's coming he's coming yes he for is you and me and well, like Brother Mike said, the, the, God didn't give up on us. Yeah. When Jesus came to the cross, he came for us. Mm -hmm. He could have easily gave up on us. We, we run the car in the ditch so many times, it's more than we can count. Mm -hmm. But God said, you know what? I'm going to make another way. And my, when my wife had the open heart surgery, there was 10 people from the church there. Mm -hmm. And we empty the coffee pot. I mean, that coffee pot was like that. And we empty it. So when that coffee pot was empty, here comes the surgeon, the doctor. He said, the Soto family, and all of them people from the church went in that room. We just barely fit in there like sardines. <laughs> and the doctor looked at me and said, wow, I didn't know you had this come. All this family. But see, when the church people stick together, just like chewing gum, they stick together, and one one of the members needs prayer. Yeah. We go through God in prayer to, for them to heal, they feel better. Like our gym sister who went to visit her, she didn't look too good. But God made a way for her to get up out of that bed and get on a wheelchair. She might be walking today, I don't know. <laughs> According to Jim, he's gonna he's gonna be the doctor and tell her what to do. <laughs> but you know, we'll see her one of these days in here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and like uh, uh, the day with Austin and Emma were talking about this morning when they came up to the campground to see you guys, and you, uh -huh. you guys prayed for her at the campground. And that night, she was everything went back to normal. Yeah. See, the thing is, is that <coughs> be ready. Uh, and I believe that it, that in, in God's word, when it says uh, be instant in season and out of season, I don't believe that's just talking about preachers. I think that's talking about Christians. Mm -hmm. Be instant in the moment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Whether it's convenient or not, right. yeah. be instant. God don't work on a timetable. God mm -hmm. works on it. Do you have faith? Are you going to listen to me? Let's do it now. Yeah.
Because the thing is, like she said this morning, had they not prayed up there, who knows what would have happened mm -hmm. with, their, with their sugar numbers that kept going up. Mm -hmm. But because of that, they went down. They went back to where they should have yeah. been. We got to be, be able to hear God, God say, hey, do it now. Yeah. Do it now. And like I said last week, we need to pray for our loved ones by name. Uh -huh. As I said last Sunday, we all have loved ones in our life, friends, family, whatever it may be, that don't know who Jesus Christ is. Mm -hmm. We need to pray for them by name. Don't pray for them in a, in a, in a short, cookie-cutter type prayer. Pray for them by name. Mm -hmm. Lift them up by name. And have faith, like we talked about tonight, that says, I'm not going to doubt it. Yep. Even if I don't see it, mm -hmm. I know it's going to happen. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like Sister Angie's dad was saying. Even if I don't see it in this life, I know it's going to happen. We need to have that kind of unwavering faith. And I'll leave you with this. And it says, and when they were come and had gathered the church together, verse 27, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And there they abode long time with the disciples. Guys, I love that verse. When they come together and gather the church together, they rehearsed. What does that mean? It means they went over all that God had done with them. They talked about all the things God had done, where God had taken them, who God had who had, had, had grown and saved and changed. And how, and I love that part, how he opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. Mm. That's awesome. God can do things. Yes. If we as the church, and I'm not talking about just one specific church, I'm talking about a church blood-bought, born again, ready to do what God has asked them to do, gets on their face before God and says, I'm going to do whatever you need me to do. Yeah. And I'm going to do it starting today. Yeah. I'm going to preach the gospel and share the gospel and pray the gospel. I'm not going to let my loss die lost. I'm not going to let my sick stay sick. I'm not going to let anybody be defeated. I'm going to show love to absolutely everybody. L loving somebody is not, is not condoning their sin. Loving somebody is loving them regardless of their sin, knowing that Jesus can change that. I don't care what you've done. I love you for who you are. I don't accept your sin. I don't condone your sin. And I will never agree with your sin. But that by no means means I don't love you. Because I do love you. And I'm going to love you enough to pray for you. And to not give up on you. That's the kind of love we got to have. God didn't approve of my sin but he loved me enough to die for me mm, yes. Yes. hath no man greater love than this John 15 13 hath no man greater love than this than to lay down his life for his friends mm -hmm. yes oh yes when you had said sometimes if you're in church and you feel like God is really you know you feel like you really got hit hard with the word and you go home and then you like you said you said well thank you God well, it's because he loved you that he spoke to you that way yeah. or us or whoever. Yeah. Because you know, he said those that he loves, he chases. So it really should make you feel good that you know that, wow, God, you really know I need mm -hmm. this. I need Absolutely. This. And, and it hurts, but I know I got to do something about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. You know. And I've, and I've said it before, none of us like to admit that we're wrong. I mean, nobody, when they're wrong, jumps up and goes, woo, woo. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I was wrong. We don't do that. Guys, honestly, if you get in an argument with your woman, do you always be the first one to go, I was wrong? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, you don't admit to anything. No. Do you know, nope, I don't recall the event in question. Mm -hmm. But no, in all seriousness, we're not ones that humanly that want to jump up and go, I was wrong. I didn't hear you. Lord, you got me. I was wrong. <laughs> Most of the time, when I was growing up, my, and I got in trouble, uh, I did, the first thing I didn't say was, "Gee, my mom and dad really loved me." Yeah. yeah. I just lost my Nintendo for two weeks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, that wasn't the first thing. First thing was, man, why they got to be like that? Yeah. You know, we don't ever want to admit that we messed up. Mm -hmm. But when it comes they to the think Lord, they hate you and they 
they don't. Right. They, they just don't want me to have no fun. They don't understand. Yeah. It's no fun. And that's what we say to God sometimes. God, why are you being so hard on me? Yeah. <laughs> why are you picking on me? <laughs> well, he's not. Nope. Just as Sister Sharon said, his word says, those that he loves, he, ch he chases. We should be thankful. The Holy Spirit hasn't given up yeah. on us. He does. Yeah. You know? And you know what? We all need it sometimes. Yes. We do. But I, I pray that God's word has spoken to you tonight. I pray that it's been a blessing to you to be here. Uh, as you can tell, I think 80 <laughs> degrees and 70 degrees is is over. <laughs> yeah. And uh, now that it gets dark earlier too, that's just one more sign that the white stuff's around the corner. Yeah. I'm not even going to say it. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> but I am thankful to the Lord for all of his blessings, for all that he's done. Yes, yes. And look forward to what he has in store. Also, continue to pray as we continue to move towards, uh, as we've talked about, uh, getting back to not only regular services, but expanding our Sunday school and and. and uh, youth and nursery uh, things as we move forward down the road with those things that God will bring people to the church to head those up. Amen. I know and I feel there's big things going to happen for the church and I believe that, that we're ready for those things to happen but as I've said God, God will make those things happen when he knows we're ready. Mm -hmm. And so just continue to pray about those things moving forward uh, we could all say when COVID's over, but it is what it is. You know, it, 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 it'll be kind of like, the, it, it, I think it's going to be around, but, you know, regardless, I ain't going to worry about it. It is what it is. You know, God's, God's got a plan. God's got something going yeah. on, and we need to stay faithful yes. to that. Strong, and so yes. continue to pray about that, though. I believe there's big things happening for the church. We have people visiting with us almost every week. Oh, man. And so it's, uh, it's, it's awesome. To see what God has in store. Like we had some kids here this morning. Absolutely. That's the start. And so keep praying, you know, because I believe the Lord's got something. Oh, yeah. And so let's keep praying. Let's stay focused. Let's stay committed. Let's be like Paul. If they hit us with bricks, let's go back in there. I figured if, if there's 20 of us walking through the door, they can't hit all of us. You know? And so we'll just keep moving forward yeah. for the Lord. Amen. And so... God bless you guys. Has a special prayer for Amen. joy for this for, for tomorrow. Yes. yes. Let's do that. Let's gather together <coughs> in the church and do that for joy and anointing. Also for um, Rita's Rita. husband. Yes. She's getting a bunch of tests tomorrow. She got home late. That's why she couldn't make it. She said she was real tired. Okay. Um, but he's got a lot going on tomorrow. Okay. She asked for prayer for him and for her. Well, then let's all come up and we'll do like we do on Saturday morning. And pray for Israel. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll see you in a little bit. <clears throat> huh? You sick? You sick? You sick?